And tonight we're talking about Autumn Sonata from 1978, directed by Ingmar Bergman. Synopsis here from Letterboxd. After a seven-year absence, Charlotte Andergast travels to Sweden to reunite with her daughter Eve, or Eva. The pair have a troubled relationship. Uh, Charlotte sacrificed the responsibilities of motherhood for a career as a classical pianist. Over an emotional night, the pair reopened the wounds of the past. Charlotte gets another shock when she finds <laughs> out that her mentally impaired daughter, Helena, is out of the asylum and living with Eva. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's I, it? Okay. So, I mean, that is, like, like actually what happens in the movie. Like, that's yeah. exactly right. Uh, so... I had never heard... Okay, I've heard of this movie. I've seen it, like, on the Criterion list for many years. And it's always like, Autumn Sonata, that sounds boring. And it's like, (laughs) the only reason that, like, you even to, like, ever think about a movie that's called Autumn Sonata is because it's directed by Ingmar Bergman. He directs Mm -hmm. good movies. So, I mean, the only reason, honestly, that we're talking about this movie is because we're doing this show and doing this right. podcast, talking about Criterions. Because otherwise, like, this movie would be, like, on the bottom of a pile of stuff to watch. Unless I was like, I'm going to watch every Ingmar Bergman movie, like, this month. Like, this this movie, I'd never go in my way. Uh, so that mm-hmm. all being said, uh, I, I, wasn't ex- I didn't know what to expect either from this movie. I, I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, it's just like, it's a movie and, uh, it'll be dramatic and there'll be performances and, uh, it'll be like, yeah. it'll be domestic. Uh, I've seen some screenshots. It looks like it's just people standing around in rooms, blah, blah, blah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I will say that I think this movie is pretty good. It's like good in the sense that it's like, just like pretty raw emotionally Mm -hmm. um like at times you're just like oh my god oh like it kind of i don't know (sighs) it makes it makes you think and feel in a way that i think a lot of the movies that we've been talking about so far in the criterion collection don't work like this at all um like i don't think any movie actually that we've watched in the previous uh 59 films uh prepared me at all for watching Autumn Sonata because I've seen movies like this mm-hmm. um, there's like yeah you're kind of like your domestic dramas your Michael Haneke stuff even like there's like a certain like real familial interaction that like exists in, in movies and none of those have been represented at all really in um, the Criterion Collection to this point so I think but I think there's more stuff like this probably along the way um, I, mm-hmm. like that, like maybe many movies from now, but I think there's stuff like this that is there. And this is kind of actually more when people probably think of the Criterion Collection, they think, oh, everything's like Autumn Sonata. Like no one thinks Robocop, <laughs> Hard Boiled, Dead Ringers, yeah. Seven Samurai, uh, even like Grand Illusion. Like most of these movies, those movies mm-hmm. have generally been like, I'd say that a lot of the movies are to a certain point superficial, even like Dead Ringers to a point is mm-hmm. like, there's a distance here. This movie though, it draws you in. Um, so I don't know. Should I, I don't know if you want to talk about your thoughts about the movie or if I can just keep going talking about what I really liked about this or what do you want? That's to on do? you. That's on you dog. You, you do you, whatever you feel is right. <clears throat> okay. So, I don't know. First thing that comes up with this movie is like, holy crap, look at these colors. Holy mm-hmm. crap, look at the compositions of this movie. Like, he's mm-hmm. just like that. He, he's Bergman for a reason. Um, and then, I th- like, the, even like the, it's actually strange, the opening credits. Like, one of the cliches uh, I have in my mind with the more Bergman stuff is that Woody Allen got his, like, black background, white text uh, titles from yeah. Bergman. And so all of Bergman's movies are always, like, black with white text over top. Um, mm-hmm. And this movie is not that at all. It's this movie that this like lovely autumnal warm oranges and reds and blue mm-hmm. and browns and stuff like that, uh, with text over top. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, okay, that's weird. And then there's some pan flute <laughs> rocking the pan flute. So, <laughs> uh-huh. you, you know, it's the seventies. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know this. And then the movie gets into motion and you're like, oh, we have a, a narrator, one of my favorite uh, cinematic uh, gimmicks, Devices. I guess. Yeah, device, gimmick, what have you. Uh, and he's just, he's this guy is laying out the movie and you're like, okay. So, but then it turns out, fuck that. This movie has nothing to do with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it's just, it, it turns into getting kicked in the stomach a lot and like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. oh, that's one of my notes. Oh God. 
Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> um, so I'll let you take it away, RJ. Uh, what did you think of Autumn Sonata? Hey, now, I thought this movie was pretty great. Yeah. Uh, I like this Bergman guy. Yeah. I've seen a handful of his movies mm-hmm. now, and uh, I've thought they've all been all-time bangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I like him a lot. Uh, he brings a real sadness to uh, all of his movies, and he's got a keen eye, and uh, he knows he knows the way to the soul, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way I can put that. Um, no, I thought this movie was great. Uh, for a lot of the reasons you said, uh, I think in a one one word way to describe it, it would be picturesque mm. because there's so many nice, like what you said, the colors. My first note was such color with a, <laughs> with an exclamation yeah. point. Much wow. Or such color, much orange. Um, yeah, everything looks great in this movie. And then you find out what the movie is actually about. And it's fucking depressing. And it's sad. And the actors are great. Uh, the two female leads are amazing. Oh. So we got Swedish Amy Adams and uh, Ingrid Bergman, uh, <laughs> who apparently is different from Ingmar. Yes, yes, as you learned this week. I learned this week. Uh, I thought they were both yeah, fucking well, yeah, Liv, terrific. Yeah, Liv, Liv Allman, yeah, because she's, uh, she's a favorite of uh, Bergman. She's in a whole bunch of shit. We'll, we'll be Amy seeing, Adams? Yeah, we'll be seeing her again. We'll, okay, she, nice. We'll, we'll be watching, she, uh, well, yeah, we'll be definitely, because she's in Cries and Whispers, which I have not yeah. seen. I, actually, I don't think I've ever seen that movie. And from mm-hmm. from all reports, RJ, that movie is like, blows this movie probably out of the water as far as like yeah. color and stuff goes. Like mm-hmm. the, the movie, the stills I've seen of this thing are just nuts. Nuts. Yeah. Nuts, I say. Well, that's cool. I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that lady was a super good actress. There were so many things like when her and her mom are having it out drinking wine and uh, she takes off her glasses at certain points and then mm-hmm. puts her glasses back on. Mm-hmm. I was just like, wow. I was like, this lady's a good fucking actress. I'll tell you that much, right? Her. Oh, man. I, I, t- <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you what. Well, yeah. Uh, but that, like, uh, their acting was great, and he's such a good director. And I really like. I know. Like, well, is, hey, that Ber- Bergman, is that news? Is that news? Bergman gets the Criterion Creep stamp of approval. Stamp of you, you, approval. Uh, they can put you it on the box it, anytime. <laughs> you made it, bud. Yeah. Uh, heck yeah a, he's heck of a director. Heck of a director. He's so good. Like the way he sets up frames, and then like the way he uses his camera. He's a big fan of mirror shots, which I love. Mm. Um, That's why I like that then, black coat's daughter. Yeah, mirror shots, man. I love I love that shit. And uh, there's just things in this movie that you don't see very often, especially now, like you used to, but not anymore. Like uh, the one scene I really liked was the whole piano sequence where the, the one daughter plays. Just, yeah. And then the mother plays because it's so long, yeah. And they're just playing music, but there's so much but in that the, the, whole scene. Yeah, the, the dynamic of it. Oh. Yeah, the dynamic. There's so much to it, and I feel like you can't. I feel like people aren't allowed to do stuff like that anymore because that was like ten minutes of mm-hmm. screen time, and it was just two ladies playing piano, um, and it was great. I fucking like. I thought that was so good, and you really get a feel for like in that scene, and then in the next one, you get a feel for the characters like that absentee mother where it's like, did, did you know one of those girls when you were younger or today even where they're always on, they're like, they're always like uh, appealing to people trying to like, they're doing this, they're doing that like show moms. <laughs> yeah. Show moms. Exactly. Even, it's even like, if they're not moms. <laughs> yeah. And you get that vibe. It was like, she wanted kids, but she didn't want to be a mother, you know? Oh shit. Dr. Phil. Oh, okay. Dr. Phil, she never really wanted the responsibility, just the glamour. But you you get like the feel of that. And especially there's that first scene, the daughter like bears her soul. And then the mom's like, you want to go for a walk or are we just hanging out? What's going on here? But then you also see the mother side, like like when she uh, she just talks to herself and Mm -hmm. you're like, is she doing that? Because she's just real lonely. Mm -hmm. Is she okay? She's dreaming of rape. Did that happen? What's going on with this lady? And, yeah. and you feel really sad for like both of them. Yeah. But then when they're together, I feel like it. I, I feel like it juggles it really well because there's one point where the daughter like totally spills her deal, and you're like, man, this mother sucks. But then the mother like tries to talk about it, and you're like, wait a minute, 
is the daughter the one that's weird? I feel like it does a good for me at least. I think yeah. there's there's one part where you're just like, wait a minute, maybe maybe it's not all the one way, and then and then mm. some more stuff happens, and you're just like, oh, oh. no, <laughs> oh no. Um, but yeah, man, this movie's great. It's fucking awesome. Every people should watch it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. People should watch it. Um, so that's the, I, that's the recommendation. You want to do? What? Yeah, that's our stamp of approval. Do you want to do some timestamps here? Okay. So, what's your timestamp, RJ? I was at an hour, so an hour of an hour and 30, 30 minute movie. So it's two thirds through, mm-hmm. and I only checked because I was just seeing how much was left. I wasn't. It wasn't one of my checks where it was like, Jesus, how much is left in this movie? I was just like, I wonder how far along we are. So I was one hour in. My timestamp was not applicable because I didn't you check. You never checked. No. Nice. Nice. That's see, that's a hot seal of approval right there, mm-hmm. baby. That was drawn in. I mean, I guess like you could argue there was like maybe two points where I, I debated it, but like I find that it's like uh, it's an insult now to the movie if I do it. So I think it's like I'm if I if I'm actually checking the time on the movie, it's like a real it'll show my disapproval of the movie to a certain degree or my judgment of it because I this movie like I thought was just like for the most part I was like I was like it just moved along even though it's like it, they don't really leave the house like they're just there the whole time no, and, it's a uh, great it's a great play yeah it's yeah, just well, yeah. two people talking I, I think i've read some people complain oh it's like a play it's like oh fuck off who cares who cares well yeah you know what you, movies are they're just fucking plays yeah with cameras unless it's a ba- unless it's baby driver yeah <laughs> and then you can have like a scene where it's like yeah I mean, you know those times you've been walking along with your ipod and you're listening to some real fat beats and you're like yeah i could like run up that moving car and like do a backflip off of it yeah i could be that i could do that oh that, come on it's, it's it's yeah it's uh that's edgar wright anyway we're talking about ingmar bergman <laughs> yeah um, so, so hey here's a here's a hot tidbit uh so oh. uh ingrid bergman Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently she found out she had cancer like a couple weeks before filming this movie. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Uh, some, other, some other hot beats. Uh, old Ingrid Bergman. He was uh, in like the midst of a like tax fight with the Swedish government at the time. Yeah. So he like had to like leave the country because they were gunning for his pocketbook, I guess pay your taxes. So uh, according to Peter Cowie, who wrote the notes for the Criterion DVD of this film, uh, this movie emerged from one of the darkest spells in Ingmar Bergman's life. In 1976, he had gone into voluntary exile in Munich after being accused of evading taxes on the income from certain films. Uh, Autumn Sonata Mm -hmm. marks the swan song of Ingrid Bergman's career, fulfilled his long-held desire to make a film with his namesake, and was his first film in Swedish Mm -hmm. in 11 years. As well, this was his last theatrical movie. Because after that, uh, his movies would be uh, television productions that would wind up getting theatrical mm-hmm. screenings, like Fanny and Alexander. Like that. Ah, yeah, that all-time banger that we will get to one day. One day, his one like, day, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. uh, back to movie note stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's the point in the movie where you're just like, ah, so the disappointment of a parent in their child is one of the themes here. And, uh, I wrote, hey, RJ, one of my fears of ever having a child of being a parent <laughs> is they're like a fucking failure or like mentally disabled Aww. or anything like oh that. Oh my God. Oh man. I, that's where I was like, oh, I could relate to that. I could relate to the mom. I could, I could feel myself and, it, oh my god mm-hmm. you're a bad person <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that like that's just what it is man it's honesty jeez come on it's like <laughs> everyone's gonna be like good job fuck up <laughs> well i mean there's okay let's keep going let's keep <laughs> uh so yeah this movie next note is this hurts to watch <laughs> It does. It does. It. You oh, feel bad watching oh, it. At and and some then points. and then RJ, man, now we've got a dead kid. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, oh, I know. Uh, and, and then it's like, oh, good. Now we're popping on the old dead kid slide carousel. And it's like, oh yeah, that's one of my favorite things to have over when my parents are visiting. It's like, oh, let's go take a look at our dead child. Wait, do you not do that? <laughs> I don't know. Is that a Baylock family uh, tradition? No, that's my other family. My dark family my transcendental uh mediation oh, i see yeah. uh yep and then yeah this movie's got real talk uh oh, yeah. just the emptiness of the lives we live <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Maybe you. Um, this movie. Raises, no, yeah, this movie's super sad. Uh, this movie raises some important questions, like the things we do to cre- keep relationships that are built with faulty supports. When perhaps it would be best to just let it all fall apart. <laughs> And uh, there's this thing where it's like it's the trade-off. It's like, well, you could start from scratch. You know, we'll start tomorrow morning after we finish off this bottle of wine, and like we're, we're just going to scrap it all, and we're going to start off from scratch, and we're just going to like pretend like we're strangers. But it's like it never works out that way because I think when you start when you start building up, you're just using faulty old materials. And can you really start over with another human being? Hey, man, that's me every pizza Sunday. Every pizza Sunday, I'd say it's going to be the last. And every every Sunday, I keep getting that Pizza Hut, that hot, locally sourced, organic, sweet, sweet hut. <laughs> so I, simp- I I relate to that, man, because I, I do that every fucking week. I said, this will be the last time. Just, I'm a big fat piece of shit now, and I got I to gotta quit eating pizza every day. But you, then I keep, I keep ordering. Are you, like, talking about tipping the driver? <laughs> um, I'll let you fill in that blank. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Brother. So I guess I was going to ask you, how do you feel about the monologuing of life in this film? How, how, how did it strike you? Because there's a I, lot, there's a, there's a bit of that. Sometimes people do that in, in a film or, you mm-hmm. know, media, movies, books. Sometimes people do that and it really bugs me it's, it's because pl- I'm just like, shut up. Yeah. I think that's where the play thing comes in. The people say, feels but, so much like a play. Yeah. But here... This movie's so good that it didn't bother me at all because I was like, no, this is just a good movie and I'm having fun and I like it. Having fun. <laughs> Watching <laughs> the dead kid slide carousel. Not not fun. It's just, it was, it was such a good movie that I was like, you know what? I It's like, I, they do it well. So there's nothing to like sneer at. Where in other, other times you see it, you're just, it seems so, uh, I don't know. Seems silly. Try just hard. Like, try hard, exactly. Like that Ty West with his horror movies. Very try hard. You know what I mean? Poor Ty. Uh, he, he always blows his endings and they, <laughs> they suck. So whatever. I don't care. He's not listening. Um, oh, uh, n- next note here uh, is uh, rape hands. <laughs> yeah. The, there's like, yeah. So it's like once in a, so the other thing that will... Uh, 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 Ingmar Bergman does she likes to throw in like weird spooky things sometimes in his movies and they play a little more spooky in his stuff because his movies are like straight up dramas and not horror stuff uh, the closest he ever makes to making a horror movie is the movie Hour of the Wolf mm-hmm. which I remember watching and kind of being underwhelmed by but I don't know maybe my opinion of it will change the next time I see it Right. but uh, in this though yeah so <laughs> Ingrid Bergman's character she's uh She's having a, a lay down, having a nap. And then but we don't know that though, but we just see like as close of a people. And then these fucking gloved hands or they, glo- I don't know if they're gloved yeah. or like they just, they appear. Yeah, they're just really coarse. <laughs> he just has really <laughs> bad skin. And just like, whoa. And he's like, what the fuck was that? Like, cause it's like, who the hell? Somebody in the house, right? There's only like one man yeah. in the house. And it's like, who is this? And it's like, oh no, that was just a dream. I'm like, ugh, yeah, that, that would freak mm-hmm. me out. It did. It freaked me out. That's for true. Yeah, no, uh, I didn't really know what that was, but it's like I was saying earlier. I think it kind of must be something to the character. You know, she's talking to herself. She's lonely. She's kind of a freakazoid. Mm-hmm. Uh, she probably doesn't even eat pizza. High, no, oh, fuck no. No, high strong is what you were saying, correct? Uh, perhaps. Or high. Yep. Yep. I'm good at this thing that we do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Everybody thinks so. A regular wordsmith. Yeah. Well, you know, I used to be, I think. But then <laughs> once I, I used to be when I was like a student and I would have to read stuff all the day and I had these big words in my head. Mm-hmm. But now I'm just a simple farmer and the sun cooks my brain mm-hmm. and I'm sweating all day. And then when I come home, I'm like a potato. Getting sunburned. Oh man, I got a I got a pretty bad burn. Don't tell Andrea though, because uh, she was telling me to put on sunscreen, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, Hungarians don't need sunscreen, and she was like, Oh, you're so stupid. And then uh, I burned my sh- my shoulders burnt because I got that farmer's tan, but I popped my top the other day, yeah, and uh, it got burnt real crispy. But mm-hmm. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to hide it. Right. I don't want her to know, mm-hmm. know my shame. Mm-hmm. 
Because uh, Hungarians don't burn. Right. So, um, whatever. Yeah. So, back to the movie. <laughs> oh, right. We do a thing about movies, hey? Uh, yeah. And then there's like, fuck, all the stuff with uh, the sister, Lena, Helena. Oh, God. God it's damn so it. It's so sad. God damn it. Rough. And there's the flashbacks. So, yeah. The movie, does the flash. Yeah. the flashbacks are so done so well. Because mm-hmm. they, they, it's all done through like door frames. Um, yeah. And like, that sounds like real, like, uh, try hard. It sounds real like, oh boy, here we go. But this movie is like, it makes so much sense. It's just, it's, mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, again, beautifully shot. Uh, and it's done like, there's no moving cameras in these shots. It's just still photographs of these moments. Mm-hmm. And it's done like at the right times because you'll get like a series of these moments during a conversation, which like helps like right. literally like when you're just having two characters talking back and forth over a table. And you're like, okay, how do you like add to this? And it's like, well, having those like visual flashbacks that aren't like, well, here's the actual interaction between these characters having their conversations, um, right. and like you don't really see uh, uh, Ingrid Bergman's character. You don't see her in those flashbacks, or not like they don't stand out. It's like her, the father, and her absence, and the feeling of her absence through all those scenes, um, and like her, like when it's like when they go back to the theme, where like the last time she was there with her like lover at the time, Leonardo. Um, mm-hmm. The, yeah, because even those flashbacks, you do see her in her own flashbacks when she's at uh, Leonardo's yeah. deathbed. Yeah, you do. Um, but but in the in her daughter, and it makes sense though for like in uh, her daughter's story that you don't see her mother in any of those scenes. Um, yeah, yeah, absentee mother, absentee mother, and then yeah, Lena is just like holy fuck. I don't know. I, I didn't even think of looking this up. It's like, is this an actress playing this to the tilt or is this like a person that actually is going through this life? And I'm going to look it up. I, I, think, I... I think it's full no, tilt it's because full in one tilt, of the flashbacks, yeah. she's standing up, but then later on she yeah. can't stand. So it's either like, which I, I know that's like, it's like, so what? She can stand and not oh, stand. But... And, we have, and we have not seen the last of her, it looks like. Uh, nice. She is also in the I Am Curious movies, Yellow and Blue. Uh, I, I don't know what that means, but I look forward to it because if she was going full tilt, this lady's a hell of an actress. Well, okay. So I'm curious and uh, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. But we'll we haven't seen there. the last of her. Uh, she died after a long battle with several illnesses, including cancer, COPD, and Guillain-Barre syndrome. <laughs> mm. I thought you were going to say something cool, like rapid, she died of rapid, many- rapid onset muscle weakness caused by the immune system damaging the peripheral nervous system. Oh, so did she? Was she really sick in this movie? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really say. She's like has a f- bit of a filmography. She lived like she was born in 1944 and lived till 1911. Nine until 1911. Sorry, uh, 2011. I was gonna say she went back in girlfriend. Time. Girlfriend was fucking resurrected sixty years later for this fucking movie, mm-hmm. twenty eleven. So was she in any of my cool movies like Small Soldiers or Sister Act? Uh, n- no. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares then? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, yeah. She seemed. She went f- full tilt. Mm-hmm. Goddamn. Goddamn. There she is riding a bike. Um, this is tantalizing talk radio. <laughs> She's riding a bike. You, uh, you describing pictures of on Google. And Anyways. Yeah. She, she was really good and it, her story is really sad and this movie is really sad. Yeah. But it's very good. But it's very <clears throat> good. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, but you know what? There's some pieces of crap in this world, RJ, who mm-hmm. did not like this movie all that much. They're wrong. There's no, uh, one stars on this, but we've got uh, L- Lassie Marhog, and he Ugh. gave this movie two stars. Uh, not my favorite Bergman by far. Strong performances, but Autumn Sonatas feels too much like film theater. Bergman by this point seemed more interested in writing than cinema. <laughs> I don't understand that as a criticism where they're like, oh, it's it's too much like it's too much like a play. It's like, yeah, that's what fucking movies are, you idiot. You idiot. You, you idiot. You nerd. That's dumb. Okay. I think that's dumb. And then uh, J.S. Latour, he gave this movie two stars as well. 
It's been years since they've seen each other, but Eva is finally receiving a visit from her mother. Unfortunately, the situation brings up an entire childhood of bad memories, and Eva ends up facing her mother with them all. If you want drama, you've got it. Yow. When we first meet Eva, she seems very nice. She takes care of her disabled sister, Helena, living a quiet, unassuming life with her husband. However, as the movie continues, Eva realizes that her mother's presence just highlights all the years of her absence, and everything starts breaking down. She grows increasingly spiteful. She admits that she never loved her husband and drives herself half insane while laying blame everywhere but on herself. According to Eva, her childhood was just as bad without mom as it was with her, and she can, can't admit a single good memory of her developing years. Uh, I'm see. I'm waiting for when the bad what? part starts. Helena serves yeah. as a physical manifestation of these emotional ills, as Eva asserts that it was her mother's neglect for, that caused her affliction. Spoilers. Meanwhile, Bergman is yeah. utterly shocked at the developments that unfold, maintaining that she tried her best. Since the film consists solely of dialogue between the two women, the performances had to be spot on. They are, although between Eva and her mother, Bergman shines brighter. Just when it seems as though all of the arguing might be over, out comes another tirade from Eva, and Bergman's expressions Jesus convey Christ. true emotions from the accusations. If you're up for a heavy mega dose of drama, this is your film. If it's going to be a, if it not, it's going to be a tough sell. Ingrid Bergman gives a great performance, but there's a lot of venom you'll have to wade through in order to see it. What that? What the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> Why is this a two star review? What what's wrong with this person? He, he he's describing why this movie is really good, and yeah. then at, and then in one line he says, "But if you don't like yeah. movies like this, you won't like this movie that's like this." And it's like, yeah, okay, I get it. If you're really into fucking like Transformers movies, you won't like a drama movie. Mm. It's like, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, Fuck. What's wrong with you? I don't get it. I don't understand. I mean, what a nerd. I just read that. I was like, what? <laughs> what yeah. Where's Where's the two stars? Where's the lack of quality? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Try hard. Yeah, that's the new word. And once you hear it, it gets it takes a while for it to work out of your brain. Yeah, I'm gonna work out of your brain. How do you How do you think of that? Oh yeah. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, those reviews are dumb. Yep. Uh, and those people are dumb. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah, you heard it here first. Pe- mm-hmm. People's opinions are wrong. Everybody is wrong but me. Yeah. Especially you. Well, let's, let's, let's not go too crazy here. Okay. Everyone's wrong but us, but especially you. Mm-hmm. See, right now I'm racing to see what J.S. Latour's uh, favorite films are. I'm very curious. Mm-hmm. I bet one of them is a Wes Anderson movie. Mm-hmm. Just because it probably one, it's probably Wes Anderson, uh, two thousand one, uh, something kooky like Shrek, and uh, something bad like uh, Flight with Denzel Washington. Mm. Oh, are you kidding me? No, I, I'm getting the Gremlins uh, back backdrop. Uh, oh no! Did Letterbox crash on wow, you? Wow, it always crashes. Okay, hold up. You no, talk oh, for a no, minute. No, no, no. Oh, go. oh, oh, oh. We got it. We got it. Uh, favorite films? Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Night of the Living Dead, Two. Seven Samurai, and From <gasps> Dusk Till Dawn. No. And in his bio, I don't do half stars. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> Most of my reviews pre-2013 were imported from my old review site off-the-shelf reviews. There may be a few that got associated with the wrong film, contained dead links, etc. during the import, and for that, I apologize in advance. Um, I don't really know what this guy's deal is. Uh, he has not wa- logged a movie since May 15th. Of this year? Uh, he, no, last year. <laughs> well, whatever, He's, he probably died then, so who cares? Exactly, yeah. Uh, recent reviews, The Boss, <laughs> one star. A, uh, a pointless waste of talent across the board. I can't fathom how this ever made it into production. I can't fathom what talent he's talking about. Surely it's not Melissa McCarthy. No. Sure. Surely I'm very witty and I have mm. nice remarks. <laughs> yeah, this guy's weird. Um, yes. Anyway. I, hey. I bet. Yeah, whatever. Let's not end on a depressing note like this movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or well, we do will, we? But do we? 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this movie is great. People should totally watch it. Uh, they're they're gonna have to listen to our podcast though to find out that it's great. And they might not listen to this episode because they're like, "Oh, I'm not. I don't care about that." But we're telling you, you should definitely watch this movie. We're telling you, baby. And now we're in forty fucking minutes into this thing, whatever it is. Jeez. We're, we're, we're telling you, you should definitely we're check, bad at this. check it out. It's good. Uh, after yeah. after the break, RJ is going to head off and leave me alone at our cottage and we'll never, we're never going to see each other again you're going you're going to fall out of your support bed <laughs> Greg, screaming for me I'm telling you to come <laughs> <laughs>